I got my 9 front terminal connected to my 9 front grid, and I'm logged in as my new regular user. So Rio was made by engineers, for engineers, by default it greets you with this plain gray space. Uh, I do like using Rio for development work. Unlike the actual desk I'm sitting at, uh, Rio provides a nice clean space without distraction. But as a casual desktop computing environment, it is lacking. And there are some things I could do. Um, do not appear to be a deeply troubled person staring into a gray void. The easiest thing to do is just to go ahead and open up some windows and run some programs in them. So let's add my stats here so I can see how my computer's doing. Um, we'll do WinWatch, which will tell me like what windows are open. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and run a clock so I know what time it is. So there we go. Now I could open these every time I log in or I could write a script to do it for me. In order to do that, I need to know what command to run to get these windows to appear with these programs in these locations. For that, I'm going to use wlock, which means window location. So type wloc, and there we go. I get a little list here of all the windows, their coordinates, and what's running in them. And these are formatted as a command. So if I go ahead and get rid of the uh, clock here, if I just take that and tell it to run it, I get a window in that location with those coordinates with a clock running in it. So now I have to put these commands into a script. So I'll go make a script. So my user gets their own bin directory. And if I go there, there's one called RC. Change directory to that. And thanks to the magic of namespaces, uh, Any time I log in, uh, that directory, user the dad bin rc, gets bound to slash bin. So it just becomes anything get, gets put in there, I can just run as a regular program. So I don't have anything in here currently, so I'll go ahead and make dad's desk. I will do chmod to make it executable, make everything in here executable. And there we go. So go ahead and open this up. Make it a oops, shebang bin RC. And then I'll copy over the ones that I want. So I want the uh, basically these top ones here. And I'll save that. So now I have a script that I can run. And where I need to put that is in my home directory in lib. It'll be a script called profile. Make this a little bigger. So this gets ran anytime you log in. So here's where it actually does those binds to put your bin and any binaries for the C uh, CPU type you're using into bin. Uh, sets the font and then checks to see if you're running a CPU or a terminal. In my case, I'm running a terminal and we can see here's where Rio actually gets started. So first off, I'm gonna add S because I like scroll to be on by default. And then I could do I and I could do uh, I'm going to make sure that it actually finds it. Sometimes it doesn't. So user, the dad, bin, rc, dad desk. So there we go. So I can do a few other changes in here. Uh, another one I like doing is I'm going to change this. This actually sets my prompt. This is why when I open a window, it says term. It's actually like every sort of other environmental variable. It'll be in the env directory. So if I just cat prompt, 
scroll is still off. We can see it returns that term. So, but I have a lot of computers on the grid. And right now, if I'm in the terminal, it'll say term. Any other, um, if I log into anything as a CPU case, it'll just say CPU. So I think I'll leave that one the same, but I'll change the CPU one so that anytime I log into a CPU, I'll still get the percent sign. Uh, but instead, I'll have it pull out the sys name. So I'll go ahead and put that. And now I'm going to reboot the uh, machine to make sure that, that actually uh, loads up correctly. So I rebooted, and I noticed I forgot to do a thing here. So I'm only getting the load, which is the default. If you just run stats without the flags, that's what you get. So I'm going to go Acme, go back to lib, profile. No, wait, it's in... In. That's what. Tomorrow it is properly running the script, but my script is bad. So I'll go to Dad's desk, and I've dealt with this before. So if you could run any sort of flags or arguments after um, inside this, you have to put single quotes around it. So I'm going to do load memory interrupts, uh, syscalls, context switch, and Ethernet. So there we go. And I'll go ahead and reboot it to make sure that it works properly again. FS halt and reboot. And here I am. So this time it loaded it with all the stats I wanted. Let's try going to another machine here. Reboot thing one. And there we go. So now the prompt tells me uh, what machine I'm running in. So if I go over to the lab pi, that'd be the Raspberry Pi I have on the grid. And it'll connect. And now the prompt tells me that I'm running on lab pi. So that's pretty handy. So let's check out some of the other things that can be tweaked here. Let's go back to profile. That's the profile. So right at the top I mentioned before, uh, there is the entry for the font that gets used. So the easiest way to sort of like do fonts is you can just sort of open up a window type font equals and change it to something and then see how it works. Um, but there's a nice little program called font cell for font select. You could run that. Now the uh, right button will change the various fonts in a type of font. So these are different couriers you could choose. And the middle button will let you pick, um, you know, sort of different font families. So here's Deja Vu Bold 12. Old 16, 18, the Unicode one looks a little bit better. Yeah, the 16 looks a little off, but the 14 looks kind of nice. So when you hit delete to exit, it will automatically print out the last font you're on. So I could actually type font equals, and then I could just Cut that and paste it. Now that's set as the font value for the environmental window or variable for this window in particular, but it didn't change anything because the window doesn't really have a reason to refresh and load in the fonts. So if you do something like run Acme, which will do that, you can now see that this window is running that new font. So I can do something like, it's uh. Census info. So there we go. So that's one way if you want to change the fonts. Oh, it's trying to find the firmware for the the uh, Wi-Fi card that's on there. I'll have to do a video soon, like on how to configure that. 
Or I did one recently, so if you dig through my past videos, there'll be one on it for this particular machine. But anyway, so that's how to change the font if you want to make the font look different too. Uh, another one, if you want to like make your life a little bit easier, you're just used to sort of like, you know, the way a lot of other computers do stuff. I'll have a link down below for um, where to find this. It's from uh, Telefill 9, and it's a little program called Vdir. It's like for visual directories, and it gives you, you know, your typical sort of, you know, uh, little file system um, browser here. So it works a little bit like, uh, like, uh, Acme does as far as the buttons. So if I right click on bin, it'll open that. I can do RC, it'll open it. If I right click on it, sometimes it'll open it. I'm not sure. Whoops, wrong button. Um, sometimes it'll open it in SAM, but it isn't super consistent. Uh, the middle click gives you the option to rename or delete. Uh, you have an option over here to make new files or new directories. Uh, if you uh, right click on the house here. This will take you back to your home directory. Uh, this goes up a directory. You can go up to there. And if you click on this one, it lets you type in something. So I could go to sys source, hit enter, and it'll take me there. So it doesn't really let you move files around or anything like that, but it is kind of a nice way to like, you know, browse through the files without having to, you know, type ls and stuff like that all the time. And finally, theming. So this is always one that comes up. I did a video on how to do it um, manually by actually going into Rio and changing the, the values in it, recompiling it. Um, but there's also a patch, and I'll have a link to it down below, um, that you can apply that um, does a much nicer system. So very Plan 9-like in that um, it will add a file. Um, to the dev directory called theme and oops cat you can read it and it will have various values now you could deliberately change some of these like if i want to make uh like an echo let's do rio back if i make it all zeros zero zero Cat that into dev theme. It will set the background color to black and it will force the uh, screen to redraw to actually apply it right away. Um, something you can do is um, you can actually put all the settings you could possibly want into a file and then put that in. So I could, let's see, I guess it left in Glenda's directory. It was a 70s theme. And send that into dev theme. There we go. So if I look at that file, let's see, Glenda, 70s theme. That's what's in it. Um, so the background is now actually an image, so that's an option it puts in. Um, so the, I'll have a link to this and it'll um, and some other stuff to show you how to do that. You have to change it from like a, like a JPEG into the, um, the plan nine image format, but, uh, yeah, it'll load images for the background. You can set the various colors and, uh, you can do some theming to make it look a little prettier if you want. And finally, I'll put a link in the description to this webpage. This is basically the one-stop shop for everything you may want to do with Plan 9 or 9 front as a daily driver. Um, I'll also put a link to another video I did running um, like desktop type apps in 9 front, but everything in that video is also covered in this guide here. Um, matter of fact, the uh, instructions for doing the theming stuff are also in here. You know, how to do, how to convert the background images um, yeah, there it is there. You can use that command to convert JPEGs into images and then load them as your background. So hopefully you find that interesting and as always have fun.